All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another Thursday night. Just kidding, it's not Thursday night. Let's 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 just start that again. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Tuesday taste along. I got the day of the week wrong. It's one of those weeks. Anyways, um, if you guys are <laughs> hanging out with me tonight, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm looking forward to a fun and you know relatively quick stream with all of you. Um, these Tuesday taste longs have generally been um, about 30 minutes each time. Give me one sec, guys. I was talking to myself in my ears. I was hearing the playback from the stream. It was confusing me. All right, so um, tonight we're going to be tasting the Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. And the way that I did this uh, this week was I asked first my patrons for some suggestions of bottles. We had like Makers 46, Cooper's Craft 100, um, yeah, some other uh, Knob Creek 9-year small batch. And then I threw in Lost Monarch, and there was one other. And I, I took those suggestions from Patreon. I moved them over to a uh, like a YouTube poll, and then had everybody vote on it on uh, on YouTube. I see Matt Porter is in the house. I'll, I'll get to you guys in the chat in just a second. But after that YouTube poll, uh, Lost Monarch was the clear winner. Like last time I checked, it had about fifty percent of the vote. Um, over hundred people had voted at that point, so it was a pretty safe bet that we were going to be sipping Lost Monarch tonight. And eventually, I had to kind of like call it and decide this is what we're going to do so I can make the graphics for everything. All right, so that's uh, that's what we've got. Let me say hello to a few people in the chat, and we'll we'll get to it. I've got um, I've got a lot of like background info to talk about as we go through tonight's tasting about Redwood Empire, the distillery as a whole, this bottle specifically, Lost Monarch. You can see I've got some other goodies on the table we'll talk about just very quickly. I wanted to just point this out. Um, and uh, And yeah, so... You know, we'll kind of we'll kind of get through it tonight. If you're watching the replay, thank you so much. If you're watching live right now, please do hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you know, consider subscribing. All that kind of good stuff. Um, first and foremost, I guess I should say cheers to all of you. I'm warming my palate up. My first drink of whiskey for the night with Redwood Empire, but this is the Pipe Dream Bourbon, which is a little bit more relaxed on the palate. A good warm up pour. So cheers to you guys. If you have a Lost Monarch. Go ahead, grab it, pour some out, get a little air in the glass, you know, and then get ready to sip along with me. And, and of course, kind of go back and forth on what we're tasting from me to you and kind of collectively do this uh, together. So cheers, everybody. All right. Man, all this Redwood Empire stuff seems to be slept on quite a bit. That pipe dream, I've uh, I've called it too relaxed, too uneventful before. It tastes pretty freaking good right now as a warm-up whiskey. So I've got to say, you know, all of these seem to be good values. Uh, but we will get into it here. Um, I have not tasted Lost Monarch in six months probably. So I wanted to kind of have a bottle like this, make this kind of a thing that happens on Tuesday Taste Alongs, where most of the time, these are bottles that I haven't been tasting recently. I think it's more fun that way that I'm kind of rediscovering or discovering for the first time some tasting notes with all of you. So Trevor Kunkel, what is up? Paul Graham, I see you, in the, uh, see you hanging out in here. Top Dog, Joe Dickinson's got his Lost Monarch ready. Brian, Jake McKee, Hendo, whose uh, who's giveaway flight got there today from, uh, from I don't know, a week a week ago or so. So that's awesome. Guys, by the way, giveaways are out from last week's Thursday night live stream. I got a couple updates to go over as well as we get into this here. But giveaways are out to Tim Evans, who I owe an Instagram message to. Tim, I'll get back to you if you see this. Uh, Tim's got the Joseph Magnus, and Scott won uh, a sample flight. So that's awesome. You guys are going to be seeing those pop in or uh, pop onto your doorstep this week. Matt Porter, I'm going to throw this on the screen. He says, Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva in October. No. <laughs> I know, man. I saw that announcement today. Hendo's going to drink some uh, some American Whiskey Batch 1. That's awesome. Top Dog likes the way that we chose the whiskey this week for the taste along. That's awesome. Uh, I was trying to take a little bit of community input and feedback on that and make the best of it. So, <laughs> Tim Swope's already been drinking his Blossom Mart. That's okay. Bev Porter, what is up? Dave Markowski. Are you slammered? Not yet. He's out of Lost Monarch, or they are out of Lost Monarch, so sipping on Cooper's Craft 100. Jonathan Cook, cheers to you. 
<laughs> Harrison Giuliano. That is a real fight card. Anderson Silva, Jake Paul. <laughs> it's going down. Rob McClure, man, what's up? Chatty111, Cask. Switch over. Uh, so I can switch over to Lost Monarch. All right. Cool. So, Scott, yeah, Scott's in the house. Uh, yeah, your, your flight is on the way as of today. Info has been given to Nancy Fraley and all that kind of good stuff. So, that's that's all good news. Cool. What else do I need to say before we get started? Cheers again. I got to get a little more whiskey in my body before I get into this Lost Monarch. I'm going to go ahead and pour it out here and then keep uh, keep yapping to all of you. I know I only have 30 minutes, but Scott's not live tonight on my bourbon journey, so I feel I feel okay. Let me know what you think about this new later time at 8.30 p.m. Is this a good time or was 7.30 better? Let me know what you think about that. All right. Um, Patreon people, patrons that are in the house, we're going to do the drawing for the Patreon monthly giveaway tomorrow. I will post about that either tonight or tomorrow morning, let you know. It's a bottle prize this month. You have a choice, whoever wins, one of five bottles. So some really good stuff in that mix, uh, you know, between $50 to $80 bottles. So so good stuff and a lot of single barrel picks, which is stuff that I like to give away. Um, yeah, and that's it. I'll, I'll give you some more announcements as we get going here, but I want to get to this tasting before I bore you to tears. Hopefully the music has kept you somewhat interested, right? All right, cool. So let's get into this Lost Monarch now. Um, remember, as we go, let me know what you guys are smelling, what you're tasting and everything. I love this back and forth format. Um, so I have some notes here on the distillery. If you see me looking down, I am referencing a few notes. I wanted to uh, have my info right, but again, I don't have any tasting notes written for this bottle. So this is all going to be off the cuff, on the fly. It's the way that I think is going to be the most fun. Uh, first and foremost, I got to acknowledge this, man. Paul Graham with the $50 Super Chat. Paul, thank you, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. Uh, cheers to that. Hell yeah. I'm going to sip this pipe dream. All right. So a little bit about Redwood Empire, the distillery first. As you can see here, the Lost Monarch is a gorgeous bottle. Okay. It has the kind of standard paper, but textured label that all of these have the white with uh, the, the color that kind of denotes what they are. The rye is green, the bourbon's red, and this, which is a bourbon and rye blend is blue. Absolutely gorgeous. Let me give you uh, an up close shot of this here. Okay. So you can see what we have here for the label. Now the bottle up top on uh, this side has a little Roman numeral for 2017 which it says established 2017. Now, if you go online, you actually find a couple conflicting dates for when Redwood Empire first started producing, distilling all this stuff. And you really have to wind back to 2001, which is when uh, Derek Benham uh, is this guy who started Purple Wine and Spirits in 2001 in Grayton, California. Now, as as he did this, he wanted to have a sort of a spirits arm of purple wine and spirits. And in 2015, he founded the Grayton Distilling Company. So some of the older bottles of Redwood Empire, I believe the, the old American whiskeys actually say Grayton Distilling Company. They do right here on the front. And the reason you see that is that was the initial name of Redwood Empire whiskey. And eventually that transitioned over. Now, the 2017 that this label references is when the very first release happened under the Redwood Empire brand. Before this, there was a gin, there was a vodka, and then in 2017, in September, we saw the release of their Batch 1 American Whiskey, which Hendo, Will Henderson in the chat is uh, sipping on. I have a Batch 2 here, all right? And those are very interesting whiskeys as well, although few and far between at this point because they're not produced anymore in that, in that bottle design. Um, the distillery itself is housed in the Russian River Valley wine region of Sonoma County, California. It's in an old apple canning and processing plant. I know a little history lesson. And that was owned by the Hallberg family. And all of the products that they canned, the Hallberg family, was they were under the Redwood Empire label. And so that's where the kind of namesake, um, at least for that little apple factory, I mean, Redwood Empire is not specific to this. There are other things uh, in the area, you know, referencing Redwoods and things like this. But that's kind of the homage to the, the previous tenants of, of that building, right? They've made sustainability a key part of their mission. Uh, they have a, 
a state-of-the-art and very unique micro column still, which allows them to distill only once. So it's a single distillation run, um, which preserves water and energy. The feed, uh, or, or I should say the mash, goes to uh, you know local farmers as livestock feed, state-of-the-art water reclamation facility. So all of these things are taken care of in terms of environmentally uh, friendly and responsible distillation, which is great. All right, so that's a little bit about the distillery itself. Obviously, in a region that cares quite a bit about the environment, um, you know, in wine country, all that kind of good stuff. So just a little history lesson for you. Um, as you can see, this bottle is coming in at 90 proof or 45% ABV. It's at least three years old. I will break down the blend here in just a second, but I want to get into the nose first. SRP is 35 bucks. You're going to find it between 35 and 45. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see all the way down here, it's a bourbon and rye blend, a combination of sourced MGP, Ross and Squibb, and also their own in-house distillate. So there we go. That's all the background we need right now. Let's get into the nose first. Here we go. Wow, I love the nose on this right away. You get a good kind of, a good medium caramel. I know that's such a generic note, but it's a great caramel foundation with a ton of spice sitting on top of it. So you you right away are kind of inundated with, at least for me, it's like I can I can smell the bourbon in here as a base, and right on top of it, the rye in the blend is is popping really well off the top. And uh, you know, I think as a as a burai, you kind of run the risk sometimes of blending in a way that mutes each individual part, or they kind of cancel each other out. This feels very complimentary on the nose uh, when you first when you first go in to smell this thing. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of kind of light fruit, almost like a perfumed note. I think sometimes on things with a lot of spice, a little bit younger in the rye category, you're going to get kind of like a perfumed note. I do get that off of here, but definitely some definitely some lighter fruits coming out of the glass, which you would imagine with a slightly younger whiskey, a good amount of rye in the blend, some orange, some some kind of apple notes. Let me know what you guys are getting as well on this actually getting a little honey, a little maltiness in here. Not like Chattanooga, not that heavy, but a little little honey kind of note. Jake says, um, Redwood Empire products should be uh, hitters. CK, I don't know what CK stands for. Um, is that supposed to be cask strength, Jake? Because I know that we do have cask strength versions of these coming out very soon with the black labels, which is very cool. Uh, Jake, uh, no, Scott says green apple peels. I would agree with that, Scott. It's not, it's not like sometimes when I think of green apple peel, I think bitter with the peel. I, I don't get a lot of bitterness here. Just, just like a nice green apple note. And I haven't sipped this thing yet. And, and different notes come out after you sip a whiskey for the first time. I'm, right now I'm just purely on the nose. I can't get away from this kind of like perfumed quality. It's almost like a perfume with grape tones to it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like uh, LaCroix. If you guys have ever had some of those, like, I don't know the flavors of LaCroix. I don't drink that stuff. It's like static. It's like flavored static in a liquid form, but like a grape LaCroix almost on the nose. Joe Dickinson, a lot of caramel and spice with some citrus. I'm going to totally agree with both of those things, or all three actually, the citrus note too. Grainy bread smell uh, after first sip. I smell the corn, says Tim Swope. Grainy bread smell. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, there is a little bit of a bready note in here. That's interesting. Like, a, this is going to sound so specific because there's, and weird because there's no wheat in here, but it's like a wheat bread almost on the nose. It just smells real good, says Rob. I agree. Some vanilla as well. I'm going to cap it off by saying that. Let's go in for it. At least my first sip. You guys might <laughs> might be ahead of me. So cheers. Ooh. That's very nice. Oh man. A little a little short in the mid palate. Like it starts to really, really blow up and develop. And then it kind of falls off. In terms of the the body of the whiskey, not the spice. The spice hangs on the entire time. The body kind of falls off a little sooner than you want it to. But we're talking about uh, a 90 proof whiskey here. 
So the amount of spice that you're getting on this and the amount of flavor that you get in the front to mid palate is great. It's way, uh, it's of a higher quality than the price point would suggest in my opinion. Like you're, you're getting a lot more than you paid for at least in the first half of the, the drinking experience. Yeah. And now after the first sip, when I go back to the nose and I'm more acclimated to this thing, I am starting to pick up some corn notes, like distinct corn grain. So who said that? Um, Tim. Tim, that's a great call out. Yeah. And I'm actually getting a little bit of oak on this too, um, which is something that you wouldn't expect with such a young product. Now, speaking of age, I'm going to let this thing sit. I am going to pour myself a little more. I took a really fat sip <laughs> on that first one. With low-proof whiskeys, it's easy to to take, you know, very large sips. <laughs> but um, speaking of age, I want to talk quickly about the blend proportions in here because they actually give you the exact proportions, you know, for the most part in terms of rye to bourbon and all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's see here. I've got it in front of me. It's a blend of three to five year rye and four to 12 year bourbon. There's some discrepancy on the website between the product page and then the shop page of this. The, the, the age is kind of different on some of them in terms of like some say like four or five and 11 year bourbon. One says four to 12 year bourbon. It's a small discrepancy, but it's just, you know, something worth calling out. I don't know if the blend is kind of changing over time and they're adjusting parts of the website, not other parts. I have no idea, but just worth kind of mentioning there. What we have is 60% rye in the blend. So actually the backbone of this is not the bourbon, which is interesting. The backbone is the rye. It's a 95.5 rye, which many of you will know as an MGP mash bill, but there's also some of their own in-house rye in the blend here. It specifically says that there is some of their own rye that they've distilled. And then the other 40%, like I said, is bourbon. Excuse me, and that is a 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. And a lot of you are also going to know that 21% rye mash bill as the lower rye MGP bourbon mash bill. So that's sourced from MGP. And I don't believe they have any of their own bourbon in the blend. The way that the website reads, it seems that it's only their own rye. But I could be wrong on that. So take that with a grain of salt. Again, 60 rye, 40 bourbon, and uh, it's three to five year rye. 4 to 12 year bourbon. I would imagine just a small proportion of 12 year and older stuff in the blend. Although after that first sip, a really good amount of oak on the palate and on the nose, which is which is fantastic. So let's go in. It's going to be my second kind of nose and sip here. Let me know what you guys are getting in the chat. If you're just now coming in here, we have 90 in on a Tuesday taste along, which is fantastic. Crazy. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hit the like button on your way in. Pour yourself some Lost Monarch. We've got another I don't know, 12 minutes or so to hang out and sip this thing together. So let's check it out again. Yeah, going back to the nose now, more fruitiness, more kind of summer fruits, mid-range fruit notes, kind of red berries, this kind of thing. And also, again, like that corn grain is more evident, sweet caramel more evident, and something else on the sweet side of things that I, that I haven't quite figured out yet. I mentioned vanilla before the first sip. It kind of it kind of hit me and it flashed by. It's not a constant vanilla presence in here, but you know, there's something that I'm missing and I'm going to see if you guys in the chat have anything to say. Let me see. Joe Dickinson. Let me put that on the screen. I think you're right, man. I think that's what it is maple i think there might be a hint of a maple note in here that's a great call out but maybe i'm just nerding out about it too much let's go in for another sip cheers guys yeah ma'am that second sip was even better than the first a lot of times you think that a second sip is going to be more dulled down after your palate has kind of adjusted to the whiskey, adjusted to the spice, that was actually more eventful than the first sip for me in terms of the body of the whiskey hanging around longer before you get into the finish. This finish is fantastic. To me, it's all it's all kind of like that prickly pepper finish. It's not that black pepper flavor, just kind of a brighter, 
white pepper spice. Sometimes when I when I get this spiciness on the palate and it's not distinct, I just say white pepper, you know, but it's basically just a nice kind of tingly pepper spice all throughout the palate. Oh man. Colin says I'm getting a ton of licorice notes on the nose. Colin, I think I could see that. To me, I think that's the the thing that I was getting earlier that I said was a little bit perfumed. I think maybe I'm interpreting whatever I'm getting as perfume, whereas maybe that's the same sort of thing you're getting on the licorice side. I don't know. I'm not getting distinct licorice. <laughs> yeah, bubble bath. Nailed it in terms of the spice profile I'm talking about. It's just like a numbing, tingly spice as opposed to like a flavorful spice. Yeah. Some people are asking, uh, how does it compare to the bourbon? Are you slammered? The bourbon feels very, like when you do this side by side, it feels so flat. It's just, you know, pretty uneventful. Uneventful. A lot of kind of like orange and toastiness on the bourbon, but it's just so flat. Cinnamon, more of those notes. Orange, toasted bread, cinnamon, but it's really flat. The, the Lost Monarch to me is so much more interesting kind of all the way around. But overall, like, we can, we can and I can nerd out about this whiskey all I want. To me, it's it's such uh, an overachieving whiskey at $35. Even up to $45, which is where sometimes you see it on the shelf at around $45. This is an overachieving whiskey. And one thing I'm worried about is as their own distillate comes of age, you know, that Redwood Empire's pumping out over there, that the blend is going to continue to change over the years and maybe not be as good. It might be better, but I am worried about how this blend is going to develop over time. So for me, it's like, this is a cheap enough bottle that you could grab two or three and put a few away in the bunker just in case down the road, it does start to decline. Um, there are a few bottles, maybe more than a few that I do that with, but this is one of those where it's like, this is just such a great value at least in my opinion, maybe maybe you guys disagree. I could see how some people might not be drawn to the, the rye spice component of this, especially people that are purist bourbon drinkers. They may not be into that because it might get a little floral, a little herbal for them. But I, I don't know. I think this is really nice stuff. Let me check out the chat, guys. <laughs> DC says... Uh, cheerio, Cam. So do you teach Paradiddle 101 at your new gig? <laughs> Basically, man. So guys, I just started a college teaching position at my alma mater, which is Capital University here in Columbus, Ohio, which is why I've been a little bit absent from the channel. Um, things have been kind of crazy getting settled in there. I'm not the full-time professor. I'm just coming in adjunct part-time, but there's been a total changeover in the entire department. And so getting accustomed to everything, getting my bearings, I, you know, I just need a little bit of time to make all that happen, but uh, I'm kind of settled in now. I had my, my first day yesterday, which was nice. So I'm teaching uh, private lessons at Capitol, and I'm also teaching yeah, the, sort of like a drumline pedagogy sort of class, which is interesting. Wow, Colin, that's a throwback, man. Uh, Bubble Bath says that they're now releasing... Redwood Empire, their older distillate as the bottled and bond versions. I haven't tried either of those. Uh, doubt it'll change that much unless their MGP stock dries up. And I wouldn't imagine that it would because it seems like they're only sourcing young stuff. Minus those slightly, you know, probably the very small percentage of 11 or 12 that's going into the blend. Other than that, I would imagine they're pretty well set on their, their MGP stuff. Peter, uh, that's interesting, man. Peter's up in Canada and he says... I passed so many times on the Lost Monarch, and now they're sold out in most of my Alberta sources. That's interesting. People may be wised up. Darrell, um, Darrell, if you look up Highland Nosing Glass, that's how I find them on Amazon. But I, if you remind me, if you shoot me over a, a message, and if you already have and I missed it, I do apologize. I can't remember if if you have. Remind me, and I will I will ping that over for you. You guys are cracking me up. What else are you getting on this? 
let's 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 kind of wrap up the tasting of this whiskey. I want to talk to you guys for a few more minutes before I get off here. I know the junkies are going to go live at like nine or nine ten. You know, whenever they decide to jump on, <laughs> they're they're always late. I I'm always a little bit late too, <laughs> so I'm not calling them out. I am uh, I'm doing the same thing. Call Cam a nanny because that glass is putting kids to sleep since man. Top Dog says, if you told me I get green apples or something, so if I call out a tasting note, you search and find it eventually, and it's great to see that we can do that too. Yeah, power of suggestion. And sometimes it's it works, and sometimes it doesn't work, but it is a good way to kind of learn whiskey. It's to do it with a group of people, whether it's online or with two of your buddies come over to your house, and it's interesting what people can teach you. Like Sarah, my wife, teaches me all the time tasting notes. She'll say something, and I'm like, damn it, I wish I would have got that first. And so, you know, it's it doesn't ever have to be somebody that's like a whiskey enthusiast or a whiskey snob. Anybody can teach you tasting notes because, you know, you're calling upon different people's sensory memories, which is cool. 21090 is going live, too, says JG. Of course, yes. I always forget. I always forget that they go live at the same time as the junkies because I really, I only pop into lives very... You know, Tuesday nights, I might pop into one of those two, but Tuesdays are generally, I'm, I'm working. So, yeah, Joe says, this is a good way to sum this up. It's a very unique pour, and there's not much like it in its price range. I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. So, guys, a couple last things before we uh, before we get off here. For me, I remember I did some clickbait thing in the title of this. What did I say? Best value whiskey under $40. I don't know if it's the best value, but it's easily a top five or top three value under under 40 bucks for me. You got like Russell's 10, Wild Turkey 101, which are both turkey products that kind of live in that in that realm for me. Cooper's Craft 100, absolutely in that realm. And, and Lost Monarch to me stands out in the category. There's nothing else like it in terms of a, a bourbon rye blend. It's great. Scott JG says lavender. That could be that sort of perfume note I was talking about. I think one way to interpret that would absolutely be lavender, depending on, you know, how how you're uh, how you're picking these things up. Yeah. Last couple of things though. I showed you guys this maybe last week on my Thursday night live stream, which is the anniversary Blantons that I bought and spent two thousand dollars on for me and Sarah, and we popped it open last Friday, which was our anniversary. So I, I didn't have this open for Thursday night's live stream. It is one of the, the French Blantons, but this one actually, this barrel got sent to Singapore. And it is the most incredible Blantons I have ever smelled and tasted in my life. Thank God, because it was way too expensive, but it was a really cool gift. We had a blast opening this thing and sipping on it. Um, and so I will be doing a video on that. I probably won't be doing any samples for giveaways or anything, but I just wanted to show you guys. I opened this thing. We, we sipped on it. It tastes a little dusty. It tastes way better than any straight from the barrel that I've had. It's only 56% alcohol, and it's way darker than my straight from the barrel, which is kind of crazy. So, yeah. And then finally, the 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 next unicorn that I open, and I don't know when this is going to be, but I I got an old Fitz 15, which is all Matt Porter's fault. He threw this in a blind for me, I don't know, a year and a half ago or something. And I was like, what is that? So this is the next unopened thing. And on the next occasion, I might have to invent an occasion to open this for because I want to open it soon. <laughs> so I will open it, Matt. I will. I promise. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging out tonight and sipping this Lost Monarch. We're at the 29-minute mark. If you're watching the replay and you hung out, really appreciate you. If you watched it live, appreciate you as well. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. All the YouTube things. Let me know what you think about Lost Monarch in the comment section. Um, for those of you in the live chat, this has been this has been a lot of fun. And, you know, I want to continue doing this each Tuesday night. What do you think? Before I get off here, do you like the 830 time slot? Is this better than the 7.30 that I was doing last week? Let, let me know. I'm, I'm curious. I want to see kind of your, your final thoughts on that before we jump off here. Let's see. Let me see if I can get a close-up shot on this Blanton's. Let me know in the chat what you guys think about that time. 
Oh, yeah, there you go. It's a beautiful bottle, and the color, I mean, you can see how just how dark this color is on this Blanton's. So, I don't know if I'll be able to sip this on a live stream. Maybe a very teeny little pour. You can see 826, 21, wedding date there. Yeah, it's a beautiful bottle. Everybody says 830 is good. 830 is good. Big thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Well, cheers. I'm going to get out of here. Go hang out with the Junkies or 21090, wherever you end up tonight. Uh, have some good whiskey. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a good week. Thursday night, I will be late. I think the stream's going to start at 10 p.m. If you guys are into stand-up comedy, Sarah and I have a date with Shane Gillis at 7 p.m. on Thursday night at the Funny Bone here in Columbus. So I will probably be live by 10 p.m., I would imagine, is a, is a good kind of safe bet. I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Thursday's live stream. I'll give away some samples probably. I don't think I'm going to do a bottle giveaway. And so that's that. Anyways, cheers. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.